So good morning, um, Year 5. Um, it's Mrs Frost here. This morning I'm going to share with you a reading comprehension and discuss how you can do the comprehension and give um, tips and ideas as we go through it. So bear with me just a second, I'm just going to share the screen with you. So as you can see, um, we are going to be looking at Stick of the Dump by Clive King. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to listen to the actual story. So if you can follow through the text as well, that would be brilliant. Okay, here we go. Stig of the Dump by Clive King. Barney had always been told not to go near the old chalk pit because it was too dangerous. If you went too near the edge, the ground would give way. But today, it was one of those grey days when there is nothing to do, nothing to play, nowhere to go, except to the chalk pit, the dump. He crawled to the edge of the pit and peered over. Far below was the bottom of the pit, the dump. Barney could see strange bits of wreckage among the moss and elder bushes and nettles. Was that the steering wheel of a ship? The tail of an aeroplane? At least there was a real bicycle. Barney felt sure he could make it go. If only he could get at it. They didn't let him have a bicycle. Barney wished he was at the bottom of the pit. And the ground gave way. Barney felt his head going down and his feet going up. There was a rattle of fallen earth beneath him. Then he was falling, still clutching the clump of grass that was falling with him. This is what it's like when the ground gives way, thought Barney. Then he seemed to turn a complete somersault in the air, bumped into a ledge of chalk halfway down, crashed through some creepers and ivy and branches and landed on a bank of moss. His thoughts did those funny things they do when you bump your head and you suddenly find yourself thinking about what you had for dinner last Tuesday, all mixed up with seven times six. Barney lay with his eyes shut, waiting for his thoughts to stop being mixed up. Then he opened them. He was lying in a kind of shelter Looking up, he could see a roof, or part of a roof, made of elder branches, a very rotten old carpet, and rusty old sheets of iron. There was a big hole, through which he must have fallen. He could see the white walls of the cliff, the trees and creepers at the top, and the sky with clouds passing over it. Barney decided he wasn't dead. Okay, so now we've listened to the extract of the um, stick of the dump and hopefully we've read through it as we were listening to it. So we're just going to have a quick look now at the listening questions and there are three of them as you can see. So over here then on the right hand side, question one says, where is Barney at the beginning of the extract? Okay, um, just in case you're not quite sure, an extract is obviously a part of the text that's been extracted from the main book. Okay, so obviously this is our part of the text. So where is Barney at the beginning of the extract? Okay, so this is the beginning of the extract, normally the first paragraph. And if we have a look through, we can see that Barney is actually at the chalk pit. Okay, so the answer to that question would be that Barney was at the chalk pit. Okay, question two says, why was Barney always told not to go to the chalk pit? So let's have a look. And when you're looking for information, sometimes it's always best to look for keywords. So to help us look for the information, the keyword probably is chalk pit. So let's have a look down here. We've got the word chalk pit down here, and we've also got it up here. So let's read through. Barney had always been told not to go near the old chalk pit because it was too dangerous. So why was Barney told not to go near the old um, chalk pit? Because obviously it was too dangerous. Okay, 
And finally, question three then on our listening questions. What made Barney think he wasn't dead after all? Now, if I remember correctly, that was right at the very end. Okay, the very last sentence, the very last paragraph says, Barney decided he wasn't dead. So what made him decide that? Let's go up a paragraph and see if we can see. So the last paragraph said, he was lying in a kind of shelter, looking up, he could see a roof or part of a roof made of elder branches, a very rotten old carpet and rusty old sheets of iron. There was a big hole through which he must have fallen. He could see the white walls of the cliff, the trees and creepers at the top and the sky with clouds passing over it. So just reminding ourselves then of the question, what made Barney think that he wasn't dead after all? For me, the answer would be that he could still see things. He could see the white walls of the cliff. He could see the trees and the creepers at the top and the sky with the clouds passing over it. Okay, so they were the listening questions that um, we should have listened to and then hopefully been able to answer those. So if I click on here, which says questions app, hopefully I will now come up with, um, I think it's six different questions, okay? Okay, so if you click on question one and it should appear so we can read it slightly better. Okay, so question one says, he crawled to the edge of the pit and peered over. What is the effect of the word peered in this sentence? So as a little bit of a guide and a little bit of a help, as you can see here in brackets, it says paragraph two. So that kind of tells you that the answer that you're looking for is probably in paragraph two. Okay, or the word you're looking for is in paragraph two. I don't always tell you which paragraph, but if it does, then obviously that's that's great help. So let's have a look in paragraph two. And if we highlight it, let's have a look. Let's do this color. Okay, so he crawled to the edge of the pit and peered over. Okay, so that's the sentence that the word peered is in. And if we then text search it, it just makes the text a little bit bigger, hopefully. Let's have a look. There we go. Okay, so paragraph two, he crawled to the edge of the pit and peered over. So if we now copy this sentence, copy to crack it, and then if we look in, click on crack it, what it does is it um, kind of copies and pastes the evidence or that particular sentence that we're looking at into the evidence section. Okay, so let's have a look. He crawled to the edge of the pit and peered over. What is the effect of the word peered? Now, obviously, the answer is actually not in the text. So it's something that we need to kind of infer from the sentence. So let's have a look. He crawled to the edge of the pit and peered over. So if you're crawling um, and you're kind of peering over, you should really be doing it kind of careful, carefully, cautiously, um, and you're getting a bit too close to the edge. So for me, the answer to that question would be that he's doing, he's peering, he's looking carefully. Okay, so it's, don't forget when you answer a question, it doesn't always have to be in full sentences. Sometimes it asks for evidence in the text, sometimes it doesn't. In this particular instance, it's not asking for either of those. So I'm just going to kind of put that peered means that he is looking carefully over the edge. Oops. Okay, so we can now check that to see whether or not our answer is right. So by checking it, it says the model answer should be, Peer tells you that he looked carefully with concentration or with difficulty, um, looked closely over the edge of the pit. Okay, so I've put peered means that he's looking carefully. So I've got that word in there. So I kind of think, yay, that's, that's good enough for me. So let's go back to the questions up then and have a look at the second question. So down here then, question number two says, paragraphs four and five are very short. Why? So let's have a look in our text search. Paragraphs four and five. So that's paragraph one, that's paragraph two, that's paragraph three. And here we have paragraphs four and five. Okay, so 
let's have a look. Paragraph four said, Barney wished he was at the bottom of the pit and the ground gave way is paragraph five. So each paragraph is only actually one sentence, but that's fine. A paragraph can be just one sentence. So I'm going to copy and crack it into, yeah. Okay, so the evidence that I'm going to use are the, are the two actual paragraphs that we're talking about. And it says, why are paragraphs four and five very short? So there's lots of reasons why um, an author can make a paragraph um, short. For me, um, I would say that it kind of goes with the speed of, of the events that are happening. So obviously, all of a sudden, he's peering over the edge and then um, he's wishing that he's at the bottom of the pit. And then the next minute, the ground gives way. And obviously, that's where he end up, ends up and that's at the bottom of the pit. So for me, it would be that um, if I'm going to type my answer, it would be um, it's linked to the speed oops, at which the events are happening. So short, sharp paragraphs um, link into the speed that's happening. But also, um, the reason we use paragraphs is to move our story on, okay, and each new action would automatically, or should automatically, trigger a new paragraph. So it would also be that, for me, I would put down each new action can or should trigger a new paragraph. And I think short, sharp paragraphs um, obviously make the, um, the text more exciting as well. So let's have a look then and see whether we're pretty much there. Okay, so it says it mirrors the speed. So obviously we've got the speed at which the events are happening. And it also shows our sequence of actions. And but again, like we said, each action triggers a new paragraph. So that's hopefully okay for question two. Okay, let's go back to question three. Okay, question three, let's have a look. And the ground gave way. Okay, again, the author has um, helped us and put obviously which paragraph we need to look at. So why does the author begin this paragraph with the word and? Okay, let's have a look and see if we can find it. Paragraph five, that's just after the two short sentences, isn't it? Okay. That's the, sorry, that's the, the fifth sentence, isn't it? So the second of the two short sentences. And the ground gave way. Okay, so I'm going to copy into crack it. And then I'm going to hopefully, I didn't copy it, sorry. Hold on, let me go back. Obviously didn't press the button hard enough. Copy to crack it. Done that, heard it crack. And then, okay, so, and the ground gave way. The question is, why does the author begin the paragraph with the word and? Now, sometimes, I know I'm certainly with my class in year five and different year groups as well, we often tell, tell you not to start a paragraph with and. Well, obviously that's not right all the time. And there are some times that you can actually start um, a sentence with or paragraph with the word and. And I think for this particular instance, if you go back and have a look, at the text above it just to show you here it says Barney wished that he was at the bottom of the pit and the ground gave way so you could have put that all in one sentence but the author has chosen to separate it out and I think oops and I think for that sorry I'm just clearing this evidence here and I think for that back into that and the ground gave way and I think for this reason I think that it um, kind of links the two paragraphs together. Okay, so it links this one and the one before. So I'm going to put in there that I think that by using the word and, it's a bit like using a um, connective and it, and it links the two um, paragraphs together. So I'm going to put in here that it links the two paragraphs, the one before, Oh, can't spell paragraphs. Hold on a minute, guys. 
or the one before together. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we think. Okay, so um, the author obviously is saying here the model answer that he wants to emphasize that there is actually a link between um, paragraph five and paragraph four. So it kind of links them together. So that's pretty much what we were saying anyway, isn't it? Okay, let's go back then to the next question. And the next question, question four, let's have a look. So question four says, the paragraph beginning, his thoughts did those funny things begins with a very long sentence. Why do you think the author didn't use shorter sentences here? So let's do a text search. Let's find um, that paragraph. Let's have a look. Okay, so we're looking at this paragraph here. Okay, I'm gonna copy and crack it. And I'm just going to read the paragraph just above that as well, just to kind of remind myself of the gist of what's happening here. OK, so then he seemed to turn a complete somersault in the air, bumped into a ledge of chalk halfway down, crashed through some creepers and ivy and branches and landed on a bank of moss. His thoughts did, did those funny things they do when you bump your head and you suddenly find yourself thinking about what you had for dinner last Tuesday all mixed up with seven times six. Who knows what seven times six is, guys? I'm only joking. Right, okay, so I've copied it. And I'm going to crack it into there, okay? And that's the paragraph, okay? Well, sorry, that's the sentence that we're looking at, okay? Let's go back to the question over here. It says, paragraph beginning, his thoughts of those funny things begins with a very long sentence. Why do you think the author didn't use shorter sentences here? Um, quite a tricky question, this one. Okay, and I think if you look at the part, if you look at the sentence, okay, he's obviously, obviously his thoughts are doing all those kind of jigging around in in your in your brain, really, and they're kind of um, all mixed up and a bit like when you dream and you're not quite sure which thought you're going to get or which bit's coming next. Okay, and they're all muddled up and you're not sure what links to which bit. And I think that's what's happened when he's banged his head and all his thoughts are all mixed up. And I think in a kind of rambling kind of way, I think that's why um, the author has maybe used a much, much longer sentence because it's trying to give a feel for his thoughts all being jumbled up. And that's how Barney is thinking at the moment. He's thinking about loads of different things all at once. And it's all, so he's, he's put all of that into a, into, into a long sentence. So, um, for me, if I'm going to be tight, if I'm going to be kind of answering that, um, I think that the length of the sentence um, kind of um, shows that barn is for. Those thoughts are mixed or rambling. And rambling means kind of just going on and on and on. So going on and on, and on a bit like the sentence does. So let's have a look and see what we think. The length of the sentence mirrors Barney's rambling thoughts. So yeah, it's just kind of saying that because the sentence is long and kind of goes on and on and on, it's kind of um, showing or mirrors that that's what um, Barney's thoughts are doing as well. So I hope that's okay. All right, let's go back then, looking at the next question. Okay, question five, we're getting there guys. So question five, read the description of the pit. A, is the author trying to make the reader excited by the pit or afraid of it? And B, how does the author manage this? Explain your response to using words and phrases from the text. Explain how the author makes you feel like this. Use information and a quotation from the story in your answer. Okay, that's one of the trickiest things to do. Quite often when you're reading a text and answering questions, 
it's very easy to go with what you think you remembered as opposed to the exact detail of the text so it's really important guys at this point that you are looking for evidence as well okay so although it's asking you to decide whether you're excited or afraid okay um whichever you choose and i'm going to give you an example of both but whichever one you choose you have to give um examples from the text okay so let's have a look at the text search then while bearing the question in mind okay so is the author trying to make you excited or afraid okay let's have a look what let's go with excited first and have a think about why if we were barney why would we be excited so i'm going to take you through to section to paragraph three okay let's have a look so if you were barney and um you were kind of um had a really good imagination it might be that this section tells the reader that barney was excited and the reason he'd be excited was that he could imagine all kinds of things actually in the pit so using examples from the text he's saying that he can see a piece of wreckage um he can see a steering wheel of an old ship so obviously he could his imagine his imagination is now beginning to kind of go in lots of different directions you can see the tail of an airplane so again what was the airplane doing there how did it get there what happened all these different questions probably going around um in barney's mind and making him really really exciting okay and finally a, a bicycle so what could he do with a bicycle okay so they might be um ones that you could um have a look at if or use if you're thinking that um you're excited so we're going to copy and crack them but then i'm also going to go back and have another look um and if we're being scared let's have a look so if we're being scared i wanted to have a look and see okay for me then if we were being scared i would i would be looking at this bit here still looking at this bit here okay far below was the bottom of the pit the dump barney could see strange bits of wreckage and the moss and elder bushes and nettles um, i'm not gonna read anymore but i'm just gonna think that actually one of the things that might make him a little bit nervous, a little bit scared, depending on what kind of personality Barney actually has, would be that um, the pit was far below. So it's an awful long way down, that pit. So maybe that would be making him nervous or a little bit anxious or scared. Um, and also reading through this, moss and elder bushes, well, that, that's okay, and nettles. Obviously, depending on whether it's a massive chunk of nettles, maybe that would be a little bit nervous because obviously we all know that nettles can sting as well okay so there would be my two answers if i was um I need to copy and crack that because obviously i've cleared it okay so answers it says read the description of the pit is the author trying to make the reader excited by the pit or afraid of it how does the author manage this explain your response using words and phrases from text so if i'm going with excited guys i would consider the fact that um his imagination okay showed lots of different ideas okay so that we're exciting and these would include things like um, the wreckage. There would be um, a steering wheel. Okay, there would be a tail of an aeroplane. And um, a bicycle. Okay. So 
moving on to say whether or not he was actually um, scared or afraid, I would put then if he was afraid, I'd have things like um, the pit was far below. And there was also nettles that could sting. Let's have a look, see where we're going with this one. Okay, so if he was excited, the author makes the pit seem exciting by letting us use see it through Barney's eyes. Barney wants an adventure and thinks he could see. So obviously what's he what he's seeing is gonna add excitement to um through adventure. And if he was afraid, then obviously the fact that the pit is dangerous and also yeah, that also there would be nettles which could hurt you or sting you. Okay, so we're pretty much there, I think, on those as well. Okay, let's do the final question. So, final question then, guys. Is this one. Okay, how does paragraph four introduce the events in the rest of this extract? Okay, so let's go to paragraph four. Okay, paragraph four. One, two, three. Okay, so Barney wished he was at the bottom of the pit. Okay, copy that, crack it in there. Okay, and it says, how does paragraph four introduce the events in the rest of this extract? Okay, so for me then, this is the most important word here. Barney wished he was at the bottom of the pit. Okay, so by wishing he was at the bottom of the pit, does it make us think that he's now imagining it? Does it make us think that his wish is going to come true. Does it make us think that that's actually what you want? So let's have a think. I don't know what you guys think, but how does paragraph four introduce the events in the rest of the extract? So it tells us what Barney, that Barney wants a central adventure, that he wished he was at the bottom of the pit. Okay, so I'm going to go with, tells us that Barney wished for a for an adventure because of A and so he wanted to be at the bottom of the pit. Oh, that thing bottom's got an E on the end of it somehow. That's okay. Let's have a look. So just recapping then, I always kind of go back and double check and rethink it. So how did paragraph four introduce the events in the rest of the extract? Okay, so it's telling us that he wants a sense of adventure. Let's have a look. Barney wished he was at the bottom of the pit and then he fell. When he opened his eyes, he found that he was at the bottom of the pit. pit. Okay, so I'm slightly wrong with that one, guys. So let's go back and... Let's just think about Barney Wish was at the bottom of the pit, so we needed to know, we needed to think about, okay, that he then fell over, over the edge, and when he opened his eyes, he was at the bottom of the pit, okay. So we're not looking to see, um, to actually, they're not looking for an answer that said the ground gave way or that he fell over. So it's really important here, guys, that you think about. The actual question and what it is it's asking and that was quite a tricky one okay so even I kind of like got a slightly sidetracked with that one okay so um the model answer that for that then really was Barney wished he was at the bottom of the pit and then he fell okay so be careful kind of what you wish for I suppose and when he opened his eyes he found that he was at the bottom of the pit okay and that's what the, that was the actual model answer so okay so now that we've done all of those and you've gone through them and we've kind of done them together and hopefully you agree with most of what I, I, I said or, or didn't say, what I'd like you to do now is have a go at the practice question, okay? So the practice question is the little white horse. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you to do that and then hopefully you'll have a go and we'll see how well you've done the next time we catch up with our reading. Hope that's okay then. Take care then, year five.